Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, we, we often hear about neurodegenerative diseases that strike the elderly, like Alzheimer's disease. But there are some less common brain diseases that affect patients in their prime of life. And one of these diseases is called progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP. PSP affects the brain cells that control balance, walking, coordination, eye movement, speech, swallowing, thinking, almost everything. That sounds terrible. Well, it is. There is no cure for PSP, so treatment focuses on managing the symptoms. And here to discuss PSP is the Division Chair of Behavioral Neurology at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Bradley Bove. Welcome to the program, Dr. Bove. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. Dr. Bovey, welcome to the program. Thank PSP. you. PSP. So it's, uh, we mentioned that it is a prime of life disease, meaning what, what's the most common age at which it strikes? Mainly 40s, 50s, or 60s. So wow. indeed, prime of life. And it's a, it can be a de- devastating disease. It is. Uh, the uh, usual course of the illness is two to five years on average. Some Shorter, uh, some uh, much longer, but it's relatively short course. Average survival, less than 10 years yes. once, once you yes. get this disease? Yes. And how common is it? It's about as common as Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, most people have not heard of PSP before, but the prevalence is about the same as ALS. And there are just a few thousand people who have this disease in the U.S., right? Correct. What, four or 5,000? Is that a pretty good Roughly, estimate? Roughly, uh, some would say in the, ten, the uh, lower tens of thousands, but uh, relatively uncommon. What does supranuclear mean? It's an old term that uh, is based on the clinical features, and the eye movements are a characteristic aspect of the illness. Uh, so the inability to look down, um, also to look up, but especially to look down, and it's because of the supranuclear involvement on the nuclea that uh, control eye movements, and that's where the term came from. Aren't you glad you asked? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, you mentioned Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, how is this different? How are the two different? Uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, it does affect the brain, but it's more of an issue of the uh, the spinal cord and the nerves that go out to the muscles. Um, so uh, it's got central nervous system and peripheral nervous system uh, in- involvement. In progressive supranuclear palsy, it's a primary brain disorder, oh. and there's more Parkinson's-like features, uh, and cognition and behavior are affected far more than in ALS. Isn't it sometimes difficult to tell the difference between this disease and Parkinson's? Uh, it is. Uh, and early on, it can be a real challenge. Uh, but the, uh, the early tendency to fall and fall repeatedly is different from typical Parkinson's disease. The eye movements are quite different, um, and the specific features of the Parkinsonism are different than in typical Parkinson's disease also. So uh, there are ways to differentiate, but it can be challenging early in the course. And the average age of onset for Parkinson's disease, significantly older? Uh, uh, At least a bit older, probably uh, uh, upwards of a decade older. Well, what causes it? Is it a is there family history that's involved? Uh, for the most part, there isn't much of a family history. It can run in families, but that's extremely rare, uh, and is due to a, uh, an accumulation of this protein tau, T-A-U, tau. Uh, Parkinson's disease is alpha-synuclein, so it's a different protein. And the parts of the brain that the tau protein misfolds and then accumulates in the neurons, they're different than in Parkinson's disease also, and that's why the clinical features are different. But no idea why this tau protein collects? Uh, No. uh, It's um, in some respects similar to Alzheimer's disease. Tau is a critical protein in Alzheimer's disease. And so what causes that uh, protein to misfold? And why does it then uh, uh, spread into different brain regions? Uh, Those aspects are still not well known. Aren't there some environmental factors uh, that possibly contribute to to this disease, I'm thinking of people who lived on a farm or drank well water or worked in the ag industry. Um, th- that data is more consistent with Parkinson's disease. In PSP, mm-hmm. it's less clear. And hypertension has been um, uh, proposed as a risk factor for PSP. But high, that's blood still, uh, high blood pressure. High blood pressure. But um, th- that's very common, and so you know, very few people get PSP. I um, Anyone who listens to this show for more than five minutes knows that I'm not a medical professional. But I have heard of people over the years um, being diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's disease. Do they actually have PSP? 
Some may. Um, some people with Parkinson's disease will uh, develop symptoms in their 20s or 30s, so very, wow. very young. In PSP, that, that's very rare to be that young. It can happen, but that's distinctly. It's more 40s, 50s, 60s, and uh, in some cases, 70s. So how, do you, how is it diagnosed? Is it just uh, the symptoms? Uh, largely the symptoms. There are some other uh, features. There's no blood tests. There's no spinal fluid test. Uh, the MRI scan can show some distinctive features that if it's present, it helps the clinician uh, to support mm-hmm. PSP, but it's largely based on clinical features. Let's talk about treatment. You did mention that the average survival is less than 10 years, so I'm assuming that means that we don't have any very good treatment. But what what do you have? What is available? Uh, There are several clinical trials, and perhaps we'll uh, discuss that, uh, very exciting clinical trials. Uh, But uh, the current uh, standard of care is medical management and uh, physical therapy, occupational uh, therapy, speech therapy. That's really the mainstay is uh, the non-medication approaches. Some people will benefit from Cinemet, which is a common medicine used in Parkinson's disease, but the response is variable. Uh, There are some other medicines that can help with symptoms, but unfortunately we don't have anything that will slow it down or halt progression. Um, In the clinical trial space, there are some anti-tau, so these are tau vaccines that are in clinical trials right now. Uh, We don't have the final results yet, but uh, uh, there's great hope that this will impact the illness. In in terms of just controlling the symptoms or actually improving survival? Uh, Improving survival. So the the primary goal is to show uh, uh, a slowing down of the rate of progression. Perhaps it'll halt progression and keep a person at their current level of disability, which obviously is not ideal. Um, But um, uh, if it's diagnosed early enough, it would have a huge impact. Uh, Will there be improvement? That's harder to say. And we'll know in the next uh, couple of years as these uh, uh, initial trials complete. It's probably a difficult disease to study because it's so rare. It is. uh, At a place like Mayo Clinic, we do see a number of uh, patients that have uh, hard-to-diagnose types of uh, neurologic problems. And uh, uh, with the experienced eye, it's usually not that difficult to establish a diagnosis. Uh, But again, early on or those with atypical features, it it can be a challenge for anyone. Of the clinical trials that are going on now, which to you looks most promising? The the tau vaccines look uh, the most uh, promising. They're directly targeted against the abnormal protein. Um, So the design is to uh, basically neutralize the abnormal tau protein collections, especially as it goes from nerve cell to nerve cell. Uh, It's a very interesting phenomenon. Why do neurologic disorders uh, evolve or worsen? And there's um, recent data that the abnormal protein may skip from neuron to the next neuron, and it may go through the synapse or through some other mechanisms. So if antibodies can then neutralize that protein so that it can't skip from neuron to neuron, at the very least, we could slow it down or halt progression. That is amazing. Uh, It is, unfortunate. Dr. Brad Beauvais, the disease is PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy. Fortunately, it's rare, affecting less than 10,000 people in the United States. It does strike in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, generally younger than people with Parkinson's disease. Truly a devastating condition, but there is hope for better treatments in the future. There is. uh We've been talking with Brad Beauvais, Dr. Brad Beauvais. He's one of the world's experts on progressive supranuclear palsy, and he is division chair of behavioral neurology at Mayo Clinic. Thanks, Dr. Beauvais. Thank you.